we're seeing indigo among the Asian carriers that are the worst affected by the Pratt and Whitney groundings. At last count, it was something upwards of 70 jets that were grounded. Where are you on this now? Is it getting better, getting worse? Good morning, and thanks for having me in the studio. Uh, you know, we, we, we indeed have the challenges of the supply chain and the Pratt and Whitney challenges, uh, which basically started already a little over a year ago. So that, that's where, where Indigo has developed actually a strategy to deal with it. So if we look to what it has effectively done on our capacity, we have been able by a whole range of mitigating measures to live up to our capacity guidance. So if we look to the calendar year 23, we've been able to welcome 100 million customers on board of our flights, which were only 78 million the year prior. So we moved up from 78 million in 22 to 100 million in 23. So that whole range of mitigating measures in terms of extra leases, lease extensions, uh, uh, bringing in other aircraft has really helped us. I think most important part for Indigo is we do have a order book of a thousand planes. With that order book of a thousand planes, we got basically a plane coming in each and every week. That for us make sure that despite all the challenges in the supply chain, we have the opportunity to deliver our capacity guidance and expand our network. Where are you on compensation talks with Pratt & Whitney? You know, of course, we are in constant dialogue with, with Pratt & Whitney, and we started that dialogue already over a year ago when the first supply chain challenges submerged. Recently, they've got more severe, as we know, by some of the additional inspections to be done. Um, and of course, we're in constant dialogue on that uh, with, uh, with Pratt & Whitney, and I would rather have that discussion behind closed doors. Okay, what about what you can tell us in terms of how much that is affecting revenue? You know, again, for us, it was important to live up to our capacity guidance and that we have been able. Having said that, of course, if you if home is the fastest growing aviation market in the world, if home is a market which is hungry for capacity, where the market is expected to double from today to 2030, so today there's 150 million domestic flyers, that number is going up to 300 million by 2030. We can use every plane there is and every grounded plane because of supply chain challenges, one too many. So we're discussing that with Pratt & Whitney. We take a whole range of measures, and I hope that in due course of the, of the year, we get a better visibility on what's next. Okay. How soon do you think this can be fully resolved for your carrier? I mean, I spoke to the Cebu Pacific CEO last week. He says he sees the issue stretching till 2026. You know, that's, that's, I guess, the guidance which was given by Pratt & Whitney on what is going to be the duration of this. So I have no, no reason to take a different guidance than the guidance which was given by Pratt & Whitney. Again, where Indigo probably is different than some of the other carriers is our order book. Plane coming in every, every week, which means if we are one year down the road from now, we have received another 50 aircraft. So we have a good, a good visibility and a good opportunity actually to deal with these challenges. I wish they were not there. The reality is they are there and we found an effective way of dealing with it. But even Airbus is facing supply issues. Do you think that target for deliveries, that's going to be met? How realistic is that? I mean, the same, the same story. We have a constant, constant dialogue with Airbus. We have, again, our number is very, very significant. We had our planes delivered in 23, according to the, 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 the agreements we have made with, with Airbus. And we could continue to work closely to make sure that for 24 and the years ahead, we'll have that exact same dynamic going forward. Okay. As you take on these planes and expand capacity, what are the international routes that you're really focusing on for expansion? Yeah. You know, Indigo in itself is, is a, I would say, a wonderful industry example and, and unprecedented, really. So when, when we reached 100 million customers last year in, in, in the year 23, um, <laughs> It was the first airline reaching 100 million customers in a single year in such a short time span. So that speaks to the market and the, the quality of the company itself, really. Going forward, that network we had was very much domestic, uh, domestic heavy, if you wish. So today we operate 86 domestic destinations and 32 and soon 33 international. Around a quarter of our seat kilometers is international and all the rest is domestic. We operate 500 rounds, 400 domestic, a little short of 100 international. Going forward, that internationalization is part of our, very much part of our strategy. And really matching also the place India is taking 
from an economic and GDP perspective on the world stage. More and more trade, more and more FDI, so we continue to build on that. Which regions exactly are you going to prioritize? You know, traditionally Indigo is very much focused on, I would say, the Middle East type of region between India and the Middle East. We have added there, more recently, Southeast Asia. Today we fly from eight different Indian cities into Singapore, for example. So we expand massively into Southeast Asia. We have recently strengthened further that scope. So we've added for the first time in history, Indigo is flying to the African continent. So we have launched in August of last year, Mumbai to Nairobi. And after that, we moved up to Central Asia, Baku, Tbilisi, Almaty, Tashkent, all operated out of Delhi. And we have announced actually this week from Delhi flights into Bali. So you see that that sort of scope is growing. When we get the Airbus XLR, which is also part of our order book, we're able to further expand that scope. So I would say you can see almost a parallel between the growth of India and what the country is doing and India by Indigo really moving that scope and moving that international exposure. Expansion on your end and helping to make the world smaller for travelers in a way. You're, you know, the chief of the largest carrier in the country that is now the most populous nation in the world. What is that going to mean for that demographic dividend and how do you see the aircraft and the airline helping to democratize air travel in India? Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing up that point. And I think Indigo has done a wonderful job there by giving air travel access to millions and millions of Indians. And if you think about it, you know, going from, from Mumbai to Bihar used to be like 24 hours by train. Now people go two hours by plane. So what it does in economic growth, what it does in accessibility, and still the numbers from an international scale are still relatively limited. There's a single digit number of Indian population having a passport. Can you imagine what that number doubles and going international? There's a still a limited number of people taking air travel as compared to, for example, rail or road. Mm. And the Indian government is very much embracing, I would say, mobility, train, road, plane as part of the economic growth. And of course, new airports being built are really helping us to propel that forward. So today we, we have that 100 million customers. We expect to double in size towards the end of the decade. So that is where, where the company is going. What is that going to mean for capital expenditure? Will you need to raise funds? Are you going to consider tapping the international bond you know, market? We, we, we had a very healthy performance uh, financially prior to COVID. Of course, COVID for Indigo, like any other airline in the world, uh, put a big dent in that. We have now completed five quarters of consecutive profit. So we're really out of the out of the COVID, five quarters of consecutive profit. And the last quarter, that profit has helped us to become network positive again. So I would say we have a very solid and healthy financial basis. We have an order book, uh, which we have different forms of financing for. We're exploring different forms of financing for, and we continue to build on that strength. And again, out of COVID, five quarters of, of solid profits is really mm. helping us to solidify that, that position. And right. that hand in hand with the growth is really moving us forward.